movement of John Williams' Bassoon Concerto, The Five Sacred Trees. And I chose to use that example because it contains a lot of really tricky fingerings in the low register. And a lot of those tricky fingerings are actually solved by my bassoon itself. Um, in the last video, I talked about a lot of really standard features, um, like the left pinky key, the double high E, F, a few extra rollers. But what I'm going to talk about on this video is a very unusual mechanism on my bass joint. It's actually a couple of different mechanisms. To illustrate this, I'm going to play something completely impossible on most bassoons. That is a perfect low D flat, E flat trill. Most bassoons cannot handle it because the pinky has to go back and forth over these two keys and the thumb has to go back and forth between these two keys in opposite directions. Most players cannot do that and I can't either. But my bassoon has a couple of really weird features. I have two keys on this bassoon that are reverse sprung, meaning that they open in the wrong direction. First off, I've got the low E flat key. And if you look over here, the low E flat and low D flat key look perfectly normal. But you look around here, there, the low E flat key is actually in two parts. Part one, is pretty normal except it's not connected to the pad cup. You pr press down this key, it lifts up this lever, and that releases the tension on the actual low E flat key. It's sprung over here right next to the low D key. So it's a two-part mechanism. Well, what happens, because it's sprung over here, there's an extra rod going from the low E flat and connecting to the low C lever. So that I push down the low E flat key, it's held down, pad is open, and now I press the low C key, and lo and behold, the low E flat key closes automatically. Meaning, anytime I have the low C key down, the low E flat key cannot open. For instance, I can play perfectly a tremolo between low C and low E flat, or tremolo between low B and low D sharp, or a tremolo between low B flat and low E flat. All perfectly playable as long as my thumb is working. It's the only finger that has to move. It, now, how does that affect the D flat? Well, what happens is underneath the key here, there's a rod extending from the E flat key to the D flat key. They are actually interconnected. I press down the D-flat key, it automatically presses down the E-flat key. How do, so how do you play low D-flat with both of them open? Well, remember, the C key closes the E-flat tone hole. It opens, now, the D-flat tone hole up here. So the D-flat tone hole is now open. Meaning if I have the low D flat key down, I can do 
the low E, low D flat, E flat trill. And all I have to do is shift my pinky position for that. But wait, we're not done because the mechanism goes one step further. The low D flat key is reversed as well. Kind of. So I press down the low D flat key and it doesn't have the, the separate bar mechanism that the E flat key does, but the, the spring is in the wrong position. So it opens and there is now an extra rod here. It's got a little roller right here and then underneath it is a bar extending from the low B key to the rod connected to the D flat key. So the D flat key is open now and I'm gonna press the low B key and it automatically closes. Meaning I now have an absolutely perfect low B to low C sharp trill. I have now a perfect low B to low E flat, but pressing the pinky D flat key. Now, watch the first four notes of the B major scale. My pinky does not move. It is press, pressed on the D flat key the entire time and it has no movement. Ah. And it's fast as I can move my thumb is as fast as I can play that scale. I don't have to worry about the pinky. I can do the same thing with the B flat minor scale. I can't. I have to. I do have to put the, the pinky down for the D flat, but now the only drawback of this system is if I go and play another bassoon that's not mine, my fingers are a little bit iffy. It's like, oh yeah, I've got to do this the the normal way. And the other thing is, I am now. Uh, reduced in some ways in the number of mute fingerings. For instance, um, we can play uh, on a normal bassoon a low C sharp with the B key down, but uh, I can't do that on here. The, with the low B down, it, it gives it a really soft uh, on the flat side, even a muted uh, low D flat. Not possible on this bassoon. Unless I take a rubber band and close the low B key by itself. But the, the mechanism itself is a development of, I believe, a 1970s system by a Romanian. Uh, bassoonist uh, George, and I'm going to butcher his last name, but I believe it's Cucereanu. Um, and this was just one of the of four mechanisms that he developed. Um, and there are some old articles on IDRS talking about the mechanism. Uh, this is actually one of them in full use. Uh, one of the other mechanisms to go with this are two extra keys for the right thumb, namely a low D key and a low C key that bridge up to the bass joint, meaning that to do any of those trills I did with just by moving my thumb, I can now completely lift the thumb up and everything is duplicated. The only keys not duplicated are the low B and the low B flat. The E flat is duplicated in the D flat key, the C key is duplicated here, the D key is duplicated here, 
And it actually becomes much more like the clarinet's alternate pinky keys between the, the right pinky and the left pinky. Uh, the system never caught on. Uh, it just added more metal and more weight to the bassoon. Uh, but this does not add but a few grams of weight to the instrument. It completely revolutionizes how the low range is fingered. And it's much more logical, much more well thought out, having everything now interconnected. The only um, real drawback, mechanically speaking, is it can go out of adjustment, but in the 11 years I've had this bassoon with this mechanism on it, it's never once gone out of adjustment. It is perfectly built, and I don't have to ever worry about it. It works perfectly. So uh, this is you know, a really, really fascinating mechanism, and one that turns a lot of heads when I show other bassoonists. Like, whoa, you can do that? And so, yeah, it doesn't involve a lot of work. In fact, it only involves drilling two new post holes to uh, put this one rod on here. It involves altering the low C key a little bit, altering the low D flat key, and then splitting this mechanism and flipping the springs. It's not a complex mechanism at all. So I hope you found this a little bit interesting on this, a very unusual feature on my bassoon.